Welcome back. In this video, we're talking about effect modifiers and interaction in your linear model. This is one video in a series of videos. I recommend you start at the beginning. There'll be a link to the playlist on the screen at the moment. Right, let's get into this. As always, everything on my screen at the moment is available as a PDF that you can download. At the end of the video, there'll be a card you can click on, take you to a resource library, download the PDF of everything here including the, the, the code that I use. So you can repeat this and always a reminder, all of the examples that I use are available in our, all the data sets that I use are part of this built in set of data sets. So you, you can replicate what I'm doing and that's the best way to learn. Okay, let's get stuck in. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. So what do we mean by effect modifiers or what do we mean by interaction between variables, right? Where the relationship between an exposure variable, so that's the variable that's on your x-axis, uh, exposure variable or explainer variable, you know, there's different, people use different words or independent variable, the, the x-axis, where the relationship between that and your outcome variable changes depending on the value of another variable, right? That means they interact. Uh, we call that an interaction or an effect modifier. It's sometimes easiest to understand by, first of all, looking at an example where there's not an interaction, and then we can move on to where there is an interaction, and the difference will become apparent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off by looking, and we looked at this exact example in a previous video, so I'm not going to get into all of the nuts and bolts in it, but really this is talking about cars, uh, we've got fuel efficiency as the outcome variable, and engine size as one of the explainer variables or independent variables, right? We see it on the x-axis there. And another e explanatory variable or independent variable is drive. Is it a two-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive? Okay, so with that in mind, so, you know, the, the, the diagram is relatively self-explanatory. The blue dots are two-wheel drives. The, the red dots are four-wheel drive cars. Just to quickly look at the outputs of our model, just we'll just revise it quickly just so that we know where we stand. To note what I've done in this particular example, if you look at the formula right at the top, formula equals, uh, you know, a, a, a highway, that's highway fuel efficiency, displacement is engine size, so highway explained by displacement, and then there's a times sign, times instead of plus, and drive, two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, and then dot equals dot means, you know, that, that's calling in the dot. Now, in this particular code, I am asking the question, is there an interaction? Right, and I'm going to show you what this all looks like when I remove that and change it to the plus, because until now, we've always been putting a plus sign in between. If we want to add an, add a variable to our analysis, uh, we add it, we put, just put in a plus. If we think that there might be an interaction, we put in a times, and then it, 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 it provides us with an inter interaction term, which I'm going to show you in a second. Right, but in this case, there isn't an interaction, and, and I'll, I'll show you exactly why. So we're going to remove that and change it to a plus in just a second, right? Uh, we're going to ignore the residuals for now. We've got a whole video on residuals. Not going to get into that right now. Um, I quickly take note, because we always do the F statistic. It's got a very low P value, so the whole model is working. We're happy with that. The adjusted R squared, so we don't look at the multiple R squared, because this is now multiple regression, not simple regression. We ignore the multiple R squared, and we look at the adjusted R squared is uh, 0.73, which means 73% of fuel efficiency can be explained by the combination of engine size and drive. And that 73% includes the idea that there might be an interaction here, right? So which we, we still remains to be seen. Okay, then let's look at our coefficients as all, not as always, because sometimes the, 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 the y-intercept is important. In this particular instance, the y-intercept isn't important because an engine size of zero is meaningless, which would be your x-axis where you got the intercept, so ignore that first coefficient. But then we've got displacement, okay, DISPL, which is engine size. It's the it's the it's at the bottom there. And displacement is a, a negative 2.87, which means that, you know, you know for, every, for every increase uh, in engine size by one unit, fuel efficiency decreases by 2.87. I think it's miles per gallon, right, fine. Then there's drive two is 4.72. And that means that if, as we move from, four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive, right? So four-wheel drive with the red. Uh, as we move from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive, there will be a gain in, two, in fuel efficiency of 4.72 miles per gallon, right? So that's the average sort of distance between the red line and the blue line with respect to the y-axis. There'll be an average increase of 4.72. Now, notice that the, these two lines are parallel. So just looking at it, it doesn't look like 
as you change engine size, the extent to which the blue line and the red line changes its slope. It looks as if those two slopes are, aren't affected by engine size. In other words, engine size doesn't interact with drive. You know, th th that's the point that I'm trying to make here because we're going to look at an example just now where there is an interaction. But I want you to understand the example where there's not an interaction and where there is an interaction will be, make much more sense. So we've got in our formula, we've got a, a displacement, which is engine size times drive, which says we, we, we think we want to check, is there an interaction? And we see that in our coefficients, it's got displacement uh, dot dot drive two and that's and that gives us a number but we can see on the right hand side that it's not statistically significant right it doesn't it's not it doesn't have a p-value of less than 0 0.05 which for this for this example we're using as our threshold it's not statistically significant which suggests that there isn't an interaction here and to confirm that to just to kind of like underline you know that that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the original data that's in this analysis here and I'm going to change it from uh, times two plus which is w really what we want here so you put a times in if you if you want to analyze it with an it, with the possibility of an interaction I'm going to rerun run that code and if we go back here it will have updated this and uh, now it doesn't have that interaction term here which which obviously we, had, we identified was not statistically significant but also look at this the adjusted r squared hasn't changed it's still 73 73 percent so the interaction term uh, not only was it not significant but it didn't add anything to the predictive power or the explanatory power um, of this particular model so we're comfortable that with respect th that there's no interaction between engine size and drive Right, so understanding an example where there's no interaction makes it much easier to understand examples where there is an interaction. And let's have a look at that right here. Um, first of all, before we, we, we get there, just here's a, a fuel efficiency explained by weight of cars. This is actually from a different data set, but it uses very similar parameters. Here we've got the weight of cars um, and we've got fuel efficiency, the extent to which fuel efficiency can be explained by the weight of the car. As the car gets heavier, fuel efficiency goes down. That makes perfect sense. Here's our very simple model on the left-hand side. Uh, as weight increases by one unit, fuel efficiency, in I think I'm assuming it's also miles per gallon, uh, decreases by 5.34. Okay, makes perfect sense, easy to understand. Now, you can imagine that there may be other variables that we wanna add to our model. And yes, of course, we do exactly that. Uh, and here we go, we've got uh, fuel efficiency explained by weight of car, but the data is now disaggregated by transmission, automatic and manual cars. And we see that suddenly there is a difference and these two lines aren't parallel. In other words, um, the, 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 the weight of the car, the, the, the extent to which we've got a slope, the slope, the coefficient, uh, the slope coefficient for manual cars and automatic cars is different. In other words, the extent to which weight of car impacts fuel efficiency depends on whether or not we're talking about a manual or an automatic car. They're not parallel curves, the, uh, lines, they're different. In other words, if I said to you, to what extent does the weight of car impact on fuel efficiency, you would have to say to me, well, it depends on whether you're talking about automatic or manual cars. It's different. Okay, so there's an interaction. Right, so th I think that curve's quite self-explanatory. We can really see the difference there. Let's take a look at, uh, that, at the model itself, at the coefficients. Right, right at the top, we've got our formula and uh, we've included the possibility of the, you know, the, the plot looking at it suggests to us very strongly that there is in fact an interaction. So when we create the, the model, we say miles per gallon explained by weight times by AM, which is, uh, uh, AM stands for, um, uh, uh, transmission times by because we say that we think there is an interaction here am not plus am because that would suggest there's the you know we're just adding it in as an extra variable times am because we want to add it as a variable and we want to look for in, in, uh, uh, interaction dot equals dot okay that's our data set right <clears throat> we're not talking about residuals at the moment we can see that the f statistic has got a nice low p values so the model works fine uh, the adjusted r squared is 80 uh, 0.81 so we say yes there's a lot of predictive power here 81 percent of the fuel efficiency can be explained by uh, weight of car transmission and the interaction of the two right so that's very interesting let's look at the coefficients themselves the intercept as is often the case i don't look at the intercept and there are some analysis where you would want to look at the inter intercept but you know the, the intercept would be what is the fuel efficiency when the weight of the car is zero 
Well, that's a meaningless question, so we ignore the intercept, right? Now, the, inter the coefficient for uh, the weight of the car, minus 3.7. So, you know, all other variables kept constant uh, if you change the weight of the car uh, for every uh, increase in weight of the car, the fuel efficiency with this model will decrease by uh, 3.7 or 3.8, you know, if you round up uh, uh, miles per gallon. Fine, that makes perfect sense, and it's statistically significant. Happy go, happy, happy with that. Um, AM manual, 14.8. So that basically means if you move from automatic to manual, so automatic is in, in, in red, manual is in blue. If you move, if the only thing you change, if you change nothing else, but you just move from an automatic to a manual car, uh, you, there would be a gain in fuel efficiency um, on average of 14.8 miles per gallon. And that's also statistically significant, so we're happy. happy. The next is the interaction term, right? And we've got WT, so the interaction of weight, and AM manual and remember there's a the, you know the automatic is the dummy variable it's to, it's against which we're always doing the comparison and i've got a, a video that talks about that in depth i can't get into that now for the for the sake of time but uh the interaction between basically transmission and weight is minus 5.2984 and i i just want us to take a moment to really understand that you know that coefficient i think that's really important that that, that this is really the sort of point of the whole lesson the first thing I'll point out is it's statistically significant. So, you know, happy days. This is something that we, that, and we expected that. What I've done here is I've written out the interpretation of this weight versus uh, transmission. I've written it out because I want you to read it and listen to me. It, this can be confusing. Let's go through it slowly uh, and make sure that you understand it. And then we'll look at the, the plot again and make sure that it makes sense there. Right. So we've got this coefficient, uh, weight versus transmission, in, in particular manual, of minus 5.29. So let's say minus 5.3, right? And this is how to interpret that coefficient. The interaction term indicates that for manual transmission, the negative impact of weight on miles per gallon is more pronounced by an additional negative 5.3 units increase in weight compared to automatic tra automatic transmission cars. Right, let me read that again because I know it can be confusing. The, this interaction term indicates that for manual transmission cars, the negative impact of weight on miles per gallon is more pronounced by an additional negative 5.3 per unit increase in weight compared to automatic tra automatic transmission cars. Right. So let's look at the at the, at the curve, and and th this is what it's talking about. Okay, for 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 manual transmission cars, the blue ones, the negative the, the, the impact the relationship between weight and fuel efficiency is is negatively impacted by an additional negative five point three, right? Negative five point two nine uh, for every increase in unit weight of the car. Okay, I know that can be a little bit confusing, but if you look at, at the graph, it makes sense. Uh, and uh, if you just go, and what, what I want you to do if you find it a little bit confusing is download the PDF of this lesson and read through that little paragraph again, slowly looking at the graph, making sure that it kind of makes sense to you. Um, it, 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 and it'll sort of click, but there you have it. That's, and, and of course, uh, it's statistically significant, so we're happy with that. The adjusted R squared is uh, 0.81, which means 81% of the fuel efficiency can be explained by weight of car and transmission and the interaction of weight and transmission. In the uh, and basically, uh, you know, in, in in the notes here, um, I have a second example where I instead of using a categorical variable, I use a uh, I, I, I use horsepower, which is a uh, numeric variable, but the principle is exactly the same. I find it easier to understand interaction when you use the example of categorical variable, a categorical variable, where you so, can sort of see the difference in colors. Where you use a, 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 um, a numeric variable, you kind of trying to imagine the sort of three-dimensional uh, plot, you know, with a, with a, you know with a plane and a, and a and a z axis, and it becomes a little bit difficult to, to visualize. It's easier to understand interactions just where you've got sort of two colored dots. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, on the screen at the moment, you will see a card. You can click on the card. Uh, that will take you to a resource library. You can download, uh, you know, the, the resource library. You can download um, the PDF of this entire lesson uh, and practice and and look at this a little bit more closely. 
Um, thanks for watching. Uh, leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. Take care. All the best.